Hello and welcome to episode 127 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is January 24th, 2022. Today I'm wearing a very special shawl. It's called Dipped in Diamonds and was designed by Scott Timothy and I was able to test knit it back when it was released in 2018. And there are several things that are special about this design. One of them is that the shawl is started at the bottom tip of the triangle and then knit upwards. I don't know many designs that do that. And then the next interesting thing is that these, um, these fringe, fringy things at the edge are knit at the same time as the main body of the shawl. So there's nothing that you have to do afterwards, but um, you actually knit those things. You knit them and you cast off or something. I don't quite remember such a long time ago. Um, but you all do that in one go. And then you, when you start at the tip, I think you even start with one of these thingies. And then you have the lace pattern and do those things on the edge. And then the, uh, a new pattern starts in the middle. And then you switch between the edge, the lace pattern, this other pattern, lace pattern and the edge. And then it continues like that. So when this new section starts, it's the same pattern as this one. And then there's another bit of the beaded pattern and then another bit of the lace pattern. And then you continue in that um, in that set patterns <laughs> until you want to stop and finish the, um, the shawl. And Another interesting thing about this shawl is that both sides look really nice and I keep forgetting which is the right side and which is the wrong side. But I think for shawls it's great if you can wear them any which way. And another thing that's special about this pattern is in this pattern where there are beads in the pattern, it's designed in such a way that half the beads show off more on this side and the other half of the beads show off more on this side. So this is really fascinating. So if you have a look at it, you can see that this and this, these beads are quite visible from this side. But then you can see there's a bead here and here and here. It's almost completely hidden. So they're hardly visible from this side, but then they're more prominent on this side. And I think this is fascinating. Um, yeah, so that was a really interesting test knit Scott Timothy had he hasn't got too many designs out yet but um, they are all really interesting um, so there's another sh um, like a mix between a scarf and a shawl that I test knit and I think right now there's only one more pattern that's out but um, yep he's definitely worth checking out so that's the shawl I'm wearing and then the pullover is the flux pullover by Tin Can Knits. So I've knit um, several flux light pullovers in, in different sizes. One for myself that I love and several small ones. And I think this is the only flux normal, so not flux light that I've knit so far. And, um, and I've modified a few things. So instead of doing the one by one rib, um, I did a two by two rib. And instead of having a garter detail on the arms, I continued the knit to mm -hmm. pearl to rib on the arms. Sorry about the noise outside. I hope it's mm -hmm. not too distracting. Um, and then I also added the same detail on the sides between the front and back. I did that with my flex light. There I, I um, did the garter panel as per pattern but I did the same between the front and back and then the other change I did a split hem and the back is a bit longer than the front um, yeah I used opal sock yarn with glitter held double and for the for my flex light I used the I used a different color of opal um, glitter yarn just by itself and yeah I'm really, really happy. The glitter is not very obvious. So if you look closely, you can see the silver Stellina in the yarn, but um, it's not too in your face. So I really like that. Um, yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. Just put the shawl back on. And then 
I would love to continue with my finished objects. And I forgot my finished object. It's so frustrating. I really try to remember everything I need to bring for my videos and um, half the time I forget something and sometimes it's something little and it's not so obvious. Um, but this time I actually forgot my finished object. I finished the um, Dubai socks by Mina Philip from her Around the World in Eight Socks pattern, ebook pattern. And um, I took it home so I could wash them and I wanted to bring them back and show them off today. And I think it's because I forgot to put the washing machine on. <laughs> I forgot to uh, bring them back to the shop and they're still at home. I will show them next week. Um, just to prove that I finished them. I, you, can, you can look on Ravelry. I've got pictures up uh, of the finished pair. But um, yeah, I was really frustrated when I realized I forgot them at home. But there is a tiny little something that sort of um, passes as a finished object. <laughs> but I do want to knit a few more. So I, I don't think I've even um, uh, created the Ravelry page. I, I'll try and do that before the video goes live. But um, I have started um, getting books from the library as ebooks. Um, so I ne I've known for quite some time that that's possible. And especially now with um, COVID and everything, you, you don't go into the city as much. And I've, I haven't been to the library in ages. But a friend showed me how I could um, get ebooks from the library that I can borrow for a certain time. And then I give them back or they just go back that's one of the good things it can't I can't forget to return them so um, yeah I tried to do that and I got a book by Anna Hopek? I don't know I forgot I, I'm not sure how the name is spelled right now but she does the mochi mochi um, creatures and I've knit I knit the stackable cats and the pileable pups years ago. I must have shown them in some video. But um, she um, published a book with minis, with mini animals and mini lots of things. And from that book, I knit a mini fried eggs. <laughs> I think it's so funny. It's so completely useless, <laughs> but so much fun. And one of the fun things with her designs is that everything has eyes. So everything will look at you. And I think it makes it even cuter and funnier. And from the pattern, you were supposed to um, embroider the eyes. And maybe that would have been better. But I was too lazy to embroider. So I just knit the beads into the yolk of the egg. <laughs> and I think they're a bit too big. I think the beads are too big. Maybe if I found uh, smaller beads, I might use the beads again. But but anyway, now I have fried eggs that have huge eyes. <laughs> and it's so funny. And it's not technically a finished object because I want to knit a few more things out of the book before I return it. Um, and only when I finish those will the whole thing be finished. But I thought it's, if... Um, so that I don't have nothing to show in my finished object segment. And because the fried egg itself is done, <laughs> I thought I'll show this. Yeah, so, so much for finished objects. Next week, I, I will really try and bring the Dubai socks. But then on to works in progress. I continue with socks. Um, I finished the first of my Zakuri remix socks. That's the pattern that I tested before it came out. It's out now. You can all buy it and knit beautiful socks. Um, the pattern is written for um, a thicker yarn so I used alpaca sock, sock yarn held double. It's back when the company was called Fair Alpaca, they're now called Hansa Farm um, and the socks are knit toe up and there are different versions in the pattern. So you can knit the pattern that I did as the test knit where I had one cable running up one side of the foot on one sock and on the other side of the foot on the other sock. Then you can knit the sock completely without cables, just with the rip pattern. Or you can do just two cables left and right on the leg of the sock. Or you can do this pattern, but that's only available in size two, where you have the all over um, cable pattern round the leg. And I'm really, really happy with um, how that came out. At first, I was a bit worried this might be too tight. 
and it is fairly tight because of the um, cable crossings but it's not too tight to get my foot through and once I'm, I have it on it sits really nicely on my leg and it's not going to um, slide away or anything and the yarn is beautifully soft and because it's a single color yarn the cable shows more nicely than on the other socks that I made. Um, yeah, so I'm really, really happy with sock number one. I started sock number two, so I finished the toe and uh, started knitting the foot. I have to knit so many rows now, rounds now, uh, until I start the increases for the heel. So that's about here. That's where I started the increases. And then you knit the heel. And then finally I can do the beautiful cables. So that's the Zakuri Remix Socks by Yuka Knits. It's all linked below the video, so if you want to know more about the pattern and things, you can uh, check out the links below the video to my Ravelry pages, and there I link to the original patterns. Yeah, same goes for the next pair of socks. That's another pattern by Nina Philip. So it's the same ebook around the world in eight socks. The socks I forgot to bring were the Dubai socks, and these are the Hong Kong socks. And I'm using Opal subscription yarn it's the abo and i'm knitting green socks for um, the organization who help women with ovarian cancer so i'm going to donate these as green socks and um, yeah so i finished the heel i did a few more pattern repeats and i was just thinking i will probably i will probably finish this and then do another half pattern repeat or maybe a full pattern repeat I'll see when I get there and then at some point I will knit the toe and then I will still have the second sock to do okay so much for socks then on to other projects I showed you my quadra cowl by Martina Beam this is one of those strange inventions of hers where you get a um, double layer cowl in two colors and the construction is really quite crazy this is another opal subscription yarn it's a beautiful rainbow color love it and as you can see i've knit quite a bit of the yarn already and this is what it looks like now i meant to put in a longer cable i forgot to do that um well maybe next week so this is what it looks like now last week i showed you just the middle and I've added quite a few rows because it's quite addictive to knit. It's very easy to knit most of the time. It's just a plain stockinette. And then there's just this simple increase at the four corners. I have stitch markers in so I don't have to count. I don't have to pay attention. And the thing is that for the cowl, this will be folded in half later. And then this edge... This is like the lower edge of the triangle that um, appears if you fold a square in half. So um, this it's yeah, you can almost see the triangle here. And the lower side of that triangle, that's the circumference of the cowl that I'm knitting. So I have to knit this bit big enough so that that fits comfortably around my head or my neck or however I wide I want to have it and this is going to be the double layer later and then so if this is half the cowl the other half <laughs> will be knit with the other uh, ball of yarn and that um, I've got to show you last time but I brought it this time and it's one of the Voldacke Anivaniva colors and Anivaniva is uh, means rainbow in I think Hawaiian but I'm not too sure and um, these were this was a color that was in their advent calendar last advent so this is the Anivaniva I think it's called navy or blue or something and I thought they would look nice together and because I've already um, balled it up you can't really see what it looked like um, on the as a skein and so I'm going to show you the other color that was in the um, advent calendar and that's this one so with all the Anivaniva colors you have one part of the skein that's rainbow and here you can really nicely see um, how the colors were dyed in these bits and then this skein has black as the main color and this one has this bright blue 
So this part of the skein was this bright blue and the other side of the skein looked exactly like this one. So um, I thought the rainbowy colors looked really nice together and, um, and I thought the blue all also looked really good with these colors. So this is going to be the second half of my Quadra Kaul. And I'm really, really excited about um, how the colors will show up in the knitted piece and um, yeah, can't wait to switch colors. That's the Quadra Kaul. Then I have a new cast on. I only have one new cast on, unless you count the fried eggs. <laughs> They're basically a new cast on, but they're so tiny, I don't think they count. But I did a proper cast on, again with Westfalen Wolle, and then I used um, Opal 8 ply, or DK, or was it weighed? Never quite sure what it's supposed to be. And I forgot to bring the second color, but um, one of the contrast colors, so one of the Opal yarns is this one that was from the series Frozen. It's one of the colors I used to knit the Here We Gnome Again gnomes. I think it's probably the leftover yarn from that um, project. And I started another gnome hat. Go big or go gnome hat. So I knit another one um, like two or three weeks ago where I used the light gray as the main color. And for the contrast color, I held the um, Opal sock yarn doubled. And this time I'm using the A-ply, which in itself is as thick as the normal sock yarn held double. Um, so I use this blue-green color for the body and I'm using this red from the series Frozen for the hats. I also cast on with that color the way the pattern says. And the biggest difference is that I use a different needle because for the first hat I used a 4mm needle thinking it would make a nice and um, sturdy hat, which it did. But then I realized that I meant to use the hat as a gauge swatch for my pullover that I want to knit out of this yarn combina combination and I realized um, if I want to use this as a great gauge swatch I have to use the same needle that I want to use for the sweater. So now I'm using a five millimeter needle which makes a much softer fabric. It's quite a bit looser as well. I hope it works as a hat um, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work nicely as a pullover. So um, yeah really happy again with what that looks like. Um, I think it'll be more important for this one to get washed. I won't block it, I'll just um, lay it flat to dry. But because it's knit looser than the other one, more loosely, um, it looks more uneven. And um, yeah, I still like the contrast colors. I think it doesn't make a big difference whether I use the eight ply yarn or the four ply held double. Um, I have an idea which colors to use for the pullover, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you when I start and if, I, if I'm actually going to stick to that plan. <laughs> it's a bit crazy again, but uh, you'll see when I get there. Um, yeah, and right now I'm thinking that for the pullover, I'm going to use the dark gray, not the light gray. And that's why I'm looking for some really bright colors to use for the gnomes. Yeah, so that's the hat. As I said, it's a lot softer and, and, and um, looser. I hope the hat's going to fit me because the other one was too small but because I'm using a bigger needle I did not increase the number of stitches and I just hope it's going to fit. And if it doesn't I'll find someone um, who has the right size head for this hat. <laughs> yeah so then that brings me to the next hat and that's um, the hat for my son and I did not a lot I didn't do a lot of knitting on that that's the wizard's hat that he wanted to have so I um, had finished the, the pointy bit quite a while ago and then I started on the brim and I've added a few centimeters to the brim and I am wondering whether that is wide enough now. We still haven't um, decided what I should do to make the brim stand up a bit and not flop down completely. Um, at the moment it's rolling quite a bit. Um, so yeah, we're not quite sure what to do. The hat itself fits him and um, I didn't get round to trying it on uh, this weekend and 
discuss with him the width of the brim that he wants. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm showing it to you because I did add some knitting to it. I added two more balls of yarn. It's the um, Baby Alpaca by Hansa Farm. That's machine washable. It's called Alpaca. And it's beautiful and soft. I'm holding it double and I'm knitting it fairly tightly to make sure that the hat sort of has some stability to it, but it's still beautifully soft and it should make a really warm hat once it's done. Yeah, we'll see how that goes on. Um, and then I have quite a few black projects at the moment. I always tell people they shouldn't do black projects in winter. I always say, they're perfect for summer. And here I am in the middle of winter knitting three black projects. <laughs> a bit crazy. Anyway, the first one, oh no, it's the second um, black project, but the first garment that I'm showing you today is the, um, I call it Rainbow Cardi. I think the partner's called Party Cardi or Rainbow Party Cardi uh, by Stephanie Lutvin. Telebean knits and I managed to um, separate for sleeves and front and back. It's really hard to see but um, yeah with my hand in there you can see this is what I've knit of the front and back. These are the sleeves. I hope the size came out all right. Again I played around a bit with the pattern and changed a few numbers the way I tend to do. Um, yeah, this is what I still have left from my first skein of yarn. This is the Merino Sock Yarn by Hansa Farm. Another beautiful, beautifully soft yarn and uh, love knitting with it. And because this is so black, I thought I'll show you once more the colors that I'm going to add to the front of the cardigan. Because the Party Cardi by um, Stephanie Lockvin is, you have a fairly plain um, jacket and then you have a beautifully bright or colorful um, edge on the fronts of the um, jacket and the neck. Um, I think there's a word for it, can't think of it at the moment, but these are the colors I'm going to use for that. These are Voldaco Minis that were in my advent calendar of 2020. Yeah, 21 is the yarn I'm using for the quadrat. Quadra Cowl and this is the year before was in my advent calendar and I think they are fantastic those colors and um, those I'm going to knit into the front of the jacket yeah and I think um, in contra contrast with the black they are even brighter <laughs> than if you have them by themselves yep so that's looking forward to that but there's still a lot of knitting to do before I get to these yeah, then the next garment um, I'm going to show you is the blue um, uh, red pattern Raglano that I'm knitting. It's a pattern by Nicolo. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And the pattern is knit, of course, for stockinette knitting. But um, basically you knit a swatch and you measure yourself and then you come up with your own set of numbers so I decided to do the swatch in rib and I'm going to knit the pullover in rib and last week I showed you um, that I had divided for the sleeves and I was uh, finishing my first skein of yarn which I have basically done I haven't exactly knit 150 grams because um, just before I finished the uh, the ball of yarn there was a knot in the yarn and I always open the knots. I never knit them in. So I opened the knot and then decided not to knit the tiny little ball that was left. But I'll keep that for later and see if I need it somewhere. But um, yeah, I just wanted to get done with this so I could start on the sleeve. And I started knitting this sleeve. And um, it's, not a, it's not really a, a small or a tight sleeve. But because of the rip pattern, because it um, pulls in... I've decided to not do any decreases yet and I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do decreases. I probably will but I might wait until I'm below the elbow and then do a few decreases and then maybe just finish knitting the way it is. So it'll be um, 
not really wide but um, but not tight either but because of the rib it won't look too wide and because it's a rib pattern I don't have to knit a um, an edge or something I can just stop anytime I like I'm not quite sure yet I'm using the um, Chao Gu mini circular needles to knit the sleeve I really enjoy doing that and for the front and back I just wanted to show you this is this is the needle I, I was knitting with and this is an extra cable that I put in that um, and I've combined those two needles with one of those combine things <laughs> it's just a a uh, piece of metal that that you can screw onto those um, cables and then you can attach two of the cables and the reason I put them in and the reason I left them in because it's now wide enough for me to try the pullover on anytime I want so I can pull this apart and you can see it's, it's it doesn't look oversized but it actually is <laughs> it's just that the rip pattern won't show it but with this long cable in here, I can try it on any time and, um, and I like, for the first sleeve, I like to try it on regularly to see how the sleeve fits. Um, I will try it on to determine how long the sleeve is going to be because if you measure it like that, it's never as, um, as um, trustworthy because once I put my arm in, it will stretch a bit in the width so it'll get a bit shorter so I just like to try things on as often as possible and that's why I leave the long cable in yeah and then the third sweater I am knitting at the moment is the Papus pullover it's a Japanese pattern and uh, I'm using this beautiful Noro yarn and today the skein looks completely different from what it looked like last week um, so if you watched the video from last week, you might remember it was grey and beige and brown colours on the outside. But I've knit those, um, I've knit all those colours, and now it's this beautiful red and um, is it a teal colour? Maybe it is. But this is about the the way the skein looked, the ball looked when I bought it, and I'm holding it double with black mohair silk by Hansa Farm. And you start the pullover with the provisional cast on and then you knit the back the upper back and the back of the sleeves and <laughs> this is um, this the sleeve is it the cuff and you do short rows so that this bit is tighter than this bit and as you can see I finished knitting the back and I did the neckline which is really cleverly done in one row and the way it's made the back is a lot tighter than the front so that your um, neckline falls to the front really nicely and um, yeah and I knit a bit down the front and once I've knit as much down the front as I've knit up in the back I can um, knit the sleeves together then I will will have finished the sleeves and once I've done that, I'm going to undo the provisional cast on completely. And then I can knit the front and back in the round down as slow as I would either like to have it or as the yarn, as I have yarn. Um, yeah, so the colors are a lot, are very muted, or the, the mohair mutes the colors a lot, which I think is really interesting. And especially because there are quite a few colors that I'm, usually not too fond of I love the way the black um, yeah, uh, dampens the colors I think it's really fascinating and I can't wait to finish this and because it's a six millimeter needle it's it goes fairly quickly and um, yeah I really really enjoy knitting this so this is not a completely black project but also quite a bit of black in there yeah so that's all the uh, jumpers or jackets or whatever I'm knitting now I have brought my um, memories blanket I managed to add two squares and one of them is actually it's so crazy this is the leftover yarn from my um, Dubai socks and I was so proud I wanted to show the Dubai socks and the square in my blanket and I wanted to say this is the way the blanket is supposed to work. I finished something, I put the square in the 
in the blanket and I'm completely done with the yarn. Um, yeah, so I can show you the square, I can't show you the socks frustrating but anyway um, so I added this square after I finished the socks and I added one more square and that's the opal yarn that I bought in Japan when I was in Japan um, almost three years ago and uh, I knit a cowl another pattern by Stephanie Lotvin out of her book um, knit happy with self-striping yarn and this was uh, I didn't have a lot left over but it was enough to do this square and there's still a tiny little bit left yeah so i'm i'm still trying to uh, work the leftover yarns in from last year and then but i'll i'm trying to do the leftover yarns from this year as i go the way i did with this with the with the dubai socks then that brings us to the knit alongs and the first of them is the Wolkig by Martina Behm. And again, I did knit on it. <laughs> so it's slowly growing a little bit, but it does take time. And I don't spend too, didn't spend too much time knitting on this. The ball of yarn still looks almost the same as it did <laughs> the whole time. I still love it. I am so happy with the fabric I'm getting. I think it's a really, a clever pattern and it's easy to knit but it's very effective in in the way it looks and I'll just keep going with it and um, hope many of you are knitting a cowl um, as well it's a free pattern so just feel free to join along in the knit along and the other knit along we are knitting the Rio Kalina cowl by Cat Body and I did a tutorial video to show how to knit the kind of scarf that you start with and I'm using again the alpaca yarn by Hansa Farm this is the washable baby alpaca yarn and I finished my piece and again I want to remind you that in the tutorial tutorial video I say to knit 110 centimeters but that's wrong it's supposed to be 86 centimeters because the pattern calls for 34 inches and I accidentally calculated 44 inches, so instead of 34 inches. Yeah, but that's um, almost exactly, or that's quite close to 86 centimeters. Um, it's never really exact because you can pull it a bit this way or you can pull it that way. But uh, I measured 86 centimeters and that's um, why I stopped knitting. And I am going to do another tutorial video to show how I cast off and I'm also going to show how I'm going to um, sew the one seam that you need and basically what will happen is that I'm going to seam the lower edge of this part to the upper edge of this part so this will be attached here and this will be attached somewhere here and then once when I wear it this will flop over and this is how you are going to see both sides of the cowl at the same time and then you can wear it here or you can move it around and really looking forward to wearing this because it feels really soft and nice and warm and the light gray is a very neutral color so I hope to be able to wear this with many many things um yeah this is kind of the back side of the cowl but as I said both sides will be visible um, so yeah they're both nice as you can see I did more cables in the first and last part fewer cables in the middle part but you can do it any way you like that's one of the nice things about the pattern you can put the cables wherever you want it's another free pattern on Ravelry so if you haven't already feel free to join in and knit your own Rio Kalina cowl yeah that's everything I wanted to show you or talk about and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.